All right. Uh, the coffees that you have are robustas. They will not. They may not have the bright acidic nuances of an arabica. The coffees are very different. They have different nuances, and look at it with a very very open mind. Remember that when you take the first spoonful of the liquor, the first thing that will hit you could be the bitterness. But look beyond the bitterness. Take another spoon and you'll be able to make out a huge panoramic view of the Robusta taste. I'm Andrew Hetzel. We're here in uh, Rio Negro at Let's Talk Coffee 2012, about to have our fine Robusta cupping. There has been the very popular notion that 100% Arabica is good. Um, everyone in the barista community knows that that is not true. Not all Arabica coffee is good. Um, there are very few black and white issues in coffee, and there is an opportunity uh, to make good quality fine robusta, which is um, as good or, or better than certainly commercial grade Arabica coffee and perhaps as good as specialty coffee in Arabica. Rather than calibrating against the understanding of the quality, I'm calibrating against my own low expectations of Robusta. Um, and then there's cups on the table that meet those low expectations. And there's some cups that emphatically exceed them. It had a really um, harsh aftertaste, which was present, really dry, astringent aftertaste, but the sweetness was good. Like a that kind of peanut, but it has some sweet chocolate and some caramel to it. Yeah, medium sort of balanced acidity, but again, like the body here, I thought was one of the better, like creamy mouthfeels in the table. One, one of the problems that the fine robusta market faces is that there is the stigma that all robusta is bad, regardless of how it's cared for. We're overcoming some of those um, predisposed uh, positions people have, some of those prejudices that people have against robusta coffee. As a result, more information is becoming available.